Advent and it's the day where we traditionally make our Christmas puddings. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of folklore and also hopefully inspire you by a few images of me making my Christmas pudding. Stirrup Sunday would traditionally hear the collect said by the vicar, Stir up we beseech thee, O Lord. But it became known as Stir up we beseech thee, the pudding in the pot. Stir up we beseech thee, and keep it all hot. It was well known that people, particularly the women, used to try and rush out of church on Sunday and get back because the long process of making the Christmas pudding needed to start as early as possible. He felt it had pagan roots and was far too Christian for his liking and far too Christmassy. He didn't like the fact that divination took place with a Christmas pudding. The idea that you'd put a silver sixpence inside or a silver coin, which would then mean if you picked it out you would have good luck and wealth for the rest of the year, really went against Cromwell's beliefs. Other things that were put in were wishbones and also um, sometimes a ring which would signify that you'd have wealth. Um, also a bachelor's button. If you got the bachelor's button it meant that you were most likely going to get married and there was also a thimble that was put in and if you got the thimble that meant that you would remain unmarried. <laughs> origin for the Christmas pudding was frumen tea. Frumen tea was a sort of a thick porridge that was made out of grains and also had different fruits in it um, which were known as plums. Plums was a term that was used for any kind of dried fruit. I'm talking about in the Middle Ages where people would be eating this really from the harvest time right through to Christmas tide and beyond. It really was a poor man's or woman's version of a decent meal. Scraps of meat were also put in it, so it was a savoury dish rather than the sort of sweeter dish that we know now. A good Christmas pudding should have 13 ingredients and you should make 13 Christmas puddings. 12 of them were to represent each month of the year and the 13th was representative of Judas Iscariot, the traitor. What you would do with your 13th Christmas pudding was that you would give it to somebody who was less fortunate than yourself. Men would stir sunwise or widdershins and women would stir anticlockwise or docile. Sunday. Well, we make our Christmas pudding, but we need to involve all of our family members. In Suffolk there was a saying that it was a three by three, which meant that there was three stirs and three wishes able to be made by each member of the household. tradition was after every member of the household had given the pudding a stir was to put it aside for a few hours for the absent visitor to give them time to stir it. I'm not sure whether that means an actual visitor or perhaps somebody who had died the previous year or one of their ancestors but that was one of the other traditions. <laughs> you've enjoyed this video about making a Christmas pudding and I hope that you'll get you and your family involved in making one. It doesn't matter if you don't make it today but you do need to make it in probably the next few days so that it gives time for it to mature and settle and really get the flavours come out. I'm going to be making a few more videos which are going to tell you a few more things that you can do in preparation for Yuletide. Thank you, bye bye.